welcome back everybody to the react native course and today we're going to be talking about how to set up react native onto our mac os device now if you don't have a mac os device don't worry i have attached links in the description down below for some very good videos that you can follow for linux and uh, windows and by the end of it once we have everything set up we are going to be installing this boilerplate code as our um, as our actual app and then we're going to build our app through there so that we have a pretty good building block and how to work with everything so let's go ahead and get started alrighty so there are a few things that you'll need to install beforehand before you can actually um, install the react native CLI and thankfully the react native documentation comes in very handy with this and I've attached the link to this documentation in the description down below so since we are using the development operating system of Mac OS I just go ahead and click that and we are going to be targeting both Android and iOS but firstly we will be installing it for Android so to install it for Android, you do need to install a couple of things beforehand. You will need Node, Watchman, and JDK as well as Android Studio. Now, JDK and Android Studio are what allow um, the Android development process to take place. And to do all that sort of stuff, we're going to be using something called Homebrew. Um, now, if you don't know what Homebrew is, it's a, another uh, package manager. In their, word, in their words, it's a missing package manager for Mac OS. Basically, this is going to allow us to be able to install all of our stuff that we need. So if you don't have Homebrew, all you have to do is just go ahead and copy this um, snippet of code right here and you just paste it into your actual uh, terminal and you can go ahead and let it just work its magic. But since I've already have it installed, I don't need to do that. Um, but after that, once you have that installed, all we have to do is copy this snippet of code, which is going to install Node and Watchman. So I'm going to paste it and let it work its magic right there. So if you don't know what Watchman is, it's a tool developed by Facebook that allows you to be watch changes in the file system and is highly recommended for you to install it for better performance. Now I'm not going to lie to you, my last computer was absolutely dookie, so I didn't really notice much of a performance boost, but since I'm using this um, Mac, I hope that it does help. Um, and since it's already installed, it's just updating itself right now. So after that, we need to install Java Development Kit. Um, if you know me, I absolutely hate installing this on Windows because it's always the biggest hassle. Uh, but thankfully, it's pretty simple on uh, Mac OS. All you have to do is copy this and it'll install something called a Zool, Zulu um, using Homebrew. And so once that's installed, we have to go ahead and install the next thing, which is going to be our Android development environment. Alrighty, so I went ahead and opened up the Android Studio um, website and the way that we're going to install it, all we have to do is click download Android Studio and be sure to read this. I've already read it in my past life and uh, we have to select which one of these that we actually have. And in my case, I have the M1 chip uh, Mac, so I'm going to go ahead and select on the Apple chip one right there and let it work its magic and let's just download. And now that it's downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and just put this bad boy in right there like so. So after you did that, um, it probably won't automatically open for you. So just go ahead and just do Windows space and then you search Android Studio and then open it up. And then once you open it up, you should see this prompt right here. It says config or installation directory. We're just going to go ahead and do uh, do not import settings and press OK. And unfortunately, it's opened up in my other uh, window. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to press next. And we can go ahead and select standard. That's about all we really need. I'm going to go to dark mode. And all of these are selected. This one is grayed out. We'll select this later um, since these are the most uh, important things that we need for this to work. After that, I'm going to press next, next. And be sure to read all of this. This is very, very important. And then click on this. And then be sure to read all of this. It's very, very important. Okay. And then pre <laughs> press accept and then finish. And now it should be installing every single thing that you need. And then you can go ahead and click finish. Perfect. So now we are welcome into Android Studio, this little um, dialog right here. What we have to do now is we need to make sure that every single thing is uh, proper. So we need to make sure our SDK platform is 33. I know it says you're 31, but we want to make sure it's up to date to what Chipmunk 2021 is, um, but which is going to be third. 33. So I'm going to click on more actions and then click on SDK manager. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in. I'm trying that it just didn't work for me. Um, but when um, when you do go into this page, you're going to see it look something like this right here. Go ahead and click on this show package details right here. Uh, it's very hard to see. I know, but uh, it says show package details. And what we have to do is depending on 
what our um, chip is, either if it's an M1 or an Intel, we have to install a couple of things. So since mine is an M1, we need to install uh, Google API ARM64 VA system image, and I think it's this one right here. And once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and click on SDK tools. And for SDK tools, it does tell us to make sure that uh, it's on version uh, 31. So if I click on show package details, it's not 31, obviously it's gonna be 33 for us for this uh, point in time. So now I'm gonna click apply and then it's gonna tell us that this needs to be installed and we're gonna go ahead and click okay. Alrighty, so now we have to set up the environment variables and these are the bane of my existence because it took me forever to understand how to actually work with this, but it's really simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this code snippet and I'm gonna paste it into my ZSH terminal. This is a terminal that I've been using the entire time. I should have specified that in the beginning. I'll add a piece of text for that specifically, but I'm gonna paste that right there and I'm gonna go to the very top of this uh, snippet of code. It's gonna take me some time, so bear with me. And once I'm at the top, at this uh, dollar sign home section right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do dot zshrc and then slash. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and press enter and that's all we have to do. So now we've set our environment variables to point to where we need them to point at. And just to make sure that we have everything working, um, if we were to type in echo uh, dollar sign Android Studio SDK root, we should see it goes to something like this. Um, it should be like user your thingy and then ZSR, ZSH, R, ZSHRC and then library under Studio SDK. And then we also have to make sure our path is also the appropriate area. So then if we click on this, and then we see that it's working perfect. All right, so now we have to install the command line interface. Now, it's really simple. Um, since Node.js already comes with it, you don't actually have to install anything. You can actually just create an app and run it. But you may run into a slight issue where, let's say you did mpx uh, react-native-init awesome project, like it is saying right there. Whoops, let me just, uh, let me just change the size of this really quickly. And it may say something like unresolved, undefined, can't find, um, react version 0.69 or something like that so to fix that issue if you ever have it um, all you have to do is run this command where it is rm dash rf uh, squiggly line slash dot npm which removes the npm um, folder and then it'll work for you so then all you have to do is npx react native in itch awesome project so now we're done with, so now let's go ahead and actually make sure that this is working. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to run this app, but I'm going to run it in my desktop. So the LSCD desktop, uh, yep, go ahead. And then we're just gonna do that right there and let it work its magic. All right, so that, now the next thing that we have to do now that our app is installed, we need to create a virtual device. So I open up my Android Studio and I'm gonna click on more action and click on virtual device manager. And then we'll see that there's already a device made, but this device is dookie. It's not gonna be able to do anything. So I'll go ahead and just delete to get it out of there. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a device and I'm gonna click on the most recent one. And we're gonna do, let's go with pixel five. And then we'll click next. We're gonna, cle we're gonna leave it as uh, API level 33, next. And I'll, I'm gonna leave it as the name is Pixel 5 API Level 33. And nothing to change there. And nothing to change there, perfect. So now if we click Finish, let it make its, let it make the device, click on this Play button and let it run the device. So now the device is running right here. And once you have it running, the next thing you have to do, go ahead and open up your Android Studio or your code editor. And you're gonna wanna go into your Android folder. Now, since this app is, very old this template code is very old what we have to do is we need to create a full is create a file called local.properties and basically what this is going to do is it's going to tell the app to look at our SDK so if you were to run the app right now what's going to happen is it's going to give you a big error that's going to say um, cannot find SDK in this uh, directory that you've specified 
So what we have to do is create a local properties file inside of the Android main folder and then give it sdk.dir is equal to space slash user slash your name right here slash library slash Android slash SDK. And then once you've done that, everything should be fine. If you have another problem still um, with your uh, SDK pointing at an incorrect area, what you can do is you can actually go back into the um, configure your Android SDK root environment variable and you just go ahead and just copy and paste this as is into your terminal. And then once that's done, you can actually go ahead and run this command called npx react native start. And while that's started, I'm going to open up another terminal and I'm going to do npx react native run android. And it should be talking to our um, emulator device right here. Oops, let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit so we can see both things at the same time. So it's saying that we have an issue, and that issue is... And so the error that we had was that we just didn't have enough space on our device. And so the way to fix that, all you have to do is click on this pencil icon, and then scroll down and click on Show Advanced Settings, and then scroll even lower, and then you want to change your internal storage and your SD card to greater than whatever is shown there currently. So I just changed it to Gigabyte and Gigabyte, and I gave both of them the value of 5. And then when you click Finish, that should be fine. And then just to make sure, you can also wipe your data and everything should be fine. And then you can press play. And once you press play, it should run. And while it's running, I'm going to go ahead and do npx react-native start. And now that that's started, be sure to get rid of your initial um, terminal where you before you made the change right here. So once you get rid of that terminal and you open up a new one, all you have to do is npx react-native run android and then let it work its magic. So we should see that it's installed here eventually. So now it's connected, perfect, and now it's installed and it is bundling and it works. So let me just make a quick change here just to make sure that everything is working as it should. So if I go into app.js and if I do uh, let's do welcome to React Native. Let's put a bunch of S's here, save it, and now we should see S's right there. Perfect. So now we've set up React Native for Android. Let's go ahead in the next video, set it up for iOS.